Welcome to another video brought to you by RoboLabs and CaramelPopcornEquipment.com. Today we're going to talk about the RoboSugar 20 Twin Auto. It's a long name, but it earns it because this is probably the most valuable, unique, and proficient machine for use in the caramel corn or even savory popcorn business. Having said that, we're going to make one batch of caramel corn and then I'll explain how that's different than the savory making process. But this machine absolutely blows away everything on the market and everyone that tries it. It's a machine that no one returns, no one sells, and more often than not, as businesses grow, they buy more and more of this piece of equipment. It is so novel and so productive, it's hard to believe anybody makes caramel corn any other way. Now the ingredients are already loaded in this machine. Uh, it does take 20 to 30 minutes to create a batch of caramel corn depending on your recipe and how much water you use. But I'm going to do cuts and edits so that we can make this go quite a bit quicker. To begin, we're going to turn the machine on. You can hear it mixing. You might not be able to see, but I've already loaded 18 gallons of popcorn into the uh, hopper to the left and we're going to see how this machine automatically heats the slurry, then automatically adds the popcorn, automatically mixes it, and then automatically cools it. And that is something you probably haven't seen before. Now while we're heating up, if uh, you take a look at the front control panel of this machine, it's pretty straightforward. I'll explain these uh, each of the buttons and options here pretty quickly. The uh, first thing you see is the digital heat display and the temperature in green below it is something you set as a user to the temperature you want the machine to add the popcorn to the caramel mix. You can see the 155, that is where this machine is going to automatically dump popcorn into the kettle. The switch below it is clearly an on and off, but notice to the left, if you can read it, it says cheese. Uh, consider that savory mode cheese being probably the most popular non-caramel popcorn people make, but savory mode works the same way with a couple nuances. And the first nuance is that it's a much lower dump temperature, usually around 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. Number two, instead of being a constant on heat, it uses a pulse heating system so as not to burn ingredients, things that could uh, easily be over dried or burned. Uh, in caramel mode, it's going to uh, heat up to the full temperature. The heat's on full. It's trying to get there as quickly as possible. You don't really have to worry about burning. Uh, the start button uh, for heating is illuminated because I pressed it once. Now, while the machine will automatically add popcorn to the caramel for mixing and then automatically start the cooling mode, if for some reason you've made a, a special variety recipe and you don't want to use the standard timings, you can always push this mixing button to um, immediately dump popcorn into your caramel slurry or, or your savory mix. Likewise, if you press and hold the cooling button, you can force the uh, popcorn to dump to the cooling mechanism at any time. Now, if there were a batch where let's say you forgot to add as much liquid as you should and you found that it was gonna burn before it got to the 155 or 160 or whatever temperature you've set, you, you can always just save that by starting the mix at any time and then again, you can start the cooling at any time. The red button is an emergency stop. I've never used it, but if for some reason something has gone horribly wrong and you don't know what else to do, it's kind of a panic button. It will shut the system down immediately. Now we're still cooking here so I'm going to leave this kettle lid on but I, I will let you see what it's looking like when we get closer to 100 degrees. You may be able to see that steam is starting to escape just a little bit. Most of the steam is contained and uh, here's what your cooling tray looks like. We'll get back to that and this is the collection bucket for the finished product. As I said I personally with my recipe wait until I get closer to 110 degrees before taking the lid off Thicker recipes, you need to go maybe all the way to 110. Thinner recipes, um, you can stop at 100 to 105. Again, I want to be clear, there's no right answer. After you make your first batch, you, you'll be able to find out at what point you can be rest assured that all the ingredients are liquefied. Uh, I'm hoping that all of my ingredients aren't liquefied because I want you to see what it is I'm talking about. As we look down in here, you're probably going to only see steam. Uh, but I'm looking at the paddle. And that no, looks like everything is liquid. So sometimes if you, if you see solids are still built up on the paddle mechanism down there, that tells you that you could uh, heat a little bit longer before taking the lid off. But everything here is a nice rolling boil of caramel. So uh, I now leave the lid off for the rest of the cook 
because this is how your sugar and your liquids turn into caramel corn. They, uh, they boil off the uh, liquid as the mixture is heated up. I'll stop the video here and come back in uh, five or ten minutes when we're a little bit close to the mixing and the dumping because that is uh, a lot more interesting to watch. All right, we're jumping back in, approaching 130 degrees. One question people often ask me is, what is the right temperature to cook until? Again, my machine is set to 155 degrees. That means nothing compared to other machines or your recipe, because the reality is the caramel's done when the caramel's done. As you can see this mix cycle start, you may have noticed a bit of steam escaping. And basically, you're done cooking when you're over 145 degrees and the steam is no longer being evaporated on the mix. Because when this cycle starts up and mixes, that uh, agitates the caramel and moisture is then released. So you get little clouds of steam and you'll, you'll see when you make caramel, if you haven't before, as you get less and less water left over, the bubbling quiets or slows down and becomes a little more foamy and you notice a whole lot less steam escaping. So again, from my recipe, 155 degrees is correct, but that means nothing about yours. Start somewhere and uh, just up and down until you think you've got it perfect. Now you can, even if you can't see the steam coming out, you can see the lens getting covered with, uh, with uh, the moisture. So by the time we get to uh, 145 degrees uh, Celsius or so, that's going to dissipate. A couple other tips about using the machine. Uh, just like any other caramel corn process, you do want to spray lecithin uh, on the corn while it's mixing. I have also found it's very handy to uh, put a light spray of lecithin on the inside walls of this kettle. Uh, it, it causes very little caramel to be sticking and, and being lost to the process. It pretty much all the caramel ends up on the corn. You'll see that a little bit later. The other thing is it helps keep the kettle real clean. This uh, machine is, oh, two, three years old, and it's probably made, oh, maybe four or five hundred batches. And uh, you, you can see it, it still looks, I wouldn't say brand new. It's always hard to tell what brand new is with industrial equipment, but it certainly does not look like it's been used and abused. So uh, still a little bubbling here. Now, personally, the other thing that, that I do, and, and it's pretty common, is around this temperature to 140, that's where I'm gonna add uh, my butter and vanilla to the process. Those are more fragile ingredients, and uh, you don't really wanna burn them. Even though the machine operates a little differently in the automation of the process, it, you're still cooking caramel corn. So for the most part, whatever temperatures you're using for your recipes and when you're adding ingredients, just do that here. You, do, you don't really have to adjust. Personally, once I hit around 140, that's where I add uh, the special ingredients, and those could be other flavors as well. Looking at uh, sort of a wall of corn here, if you uh, notice, I, I make a lot of different flavors, um, everything from whites and blues and reds and oranges and pretty much everything in the gamut. And then, of course, Tutti Frutti, which, which has all of the flavors. When you add these flavors and colors, you want to do those as late in the process as possible instead of uh, around 140. I'll even wait to maybe 145 because you don't need to cook your flavors and you certainly don't need to cook your colors. So the later you add them, the better. So we'll take another break here. I'm going to add my vanilla and my butter and we'll come back as this gets uh, pretty much close to being done. And again, hopefully you can see some steam being released. Um, when we get to around 145, I'll try to do a good job of, of showing you that there, there's no water left and what the caramel looks like when it's done. So here we still have a pretty fast boil. And um, like I said, I'm going to add my, uh, my butter and my vanilla and be right back. Once the machine hits its set temperature, it's going to go ahead and dump this popcorn in and start mixing automatically. I will spray some lecithin, just as you would with any other kettle. Again, the kettle doesn't change the fact that caramel is sticky and that um, you want an even, smooth coating uh, across the caramel you want it to distribute, and you'll see how well this machine does it. All right, we're just hitting the temperature where the uh, system is going to automatically do the mixing. I guess I'll see if I can spray lecithin as a dump. Yeah, well, I guess I'm maybe holding this steady enough. Now again, I did put a light coating of lecithin on the side walls, and uh, at the end of the batch you'll see how significant that is in terms of uh, keeping it clean and, and getting all the caramel on to the actual popcorn uh, rather than wasting a bunch of it and leaving it on the side wall. Now this mix goes on for about two minutes. And at that point, it's going to get real loud because the cooling tray 
will uh, will start to move. And this is a two-speed cooling tray. I'm going to tell you what it's going to do now, and then I'm going to do a couple edits so you can see it change speed. But it's going to make a lot of noise. Uh, I mean, in in practice, it's not bothersome, but in terms of trying to make a video, uh, it does sort of drown out my voice. So it's two-speed. It starts out very quickly. I'll maybe. Uh, do 10 or 15 seconds of that and then after a minute or two it drops down to a slower speed and I'll make sure to catch that as well. You can probably tell just how well this mixing has occurred and again I'll, I'll show you the sidewalls later. There's a teeny bit of caramel on it but I've seen kettles where it looks like 10% of the caramel gets wasted and, and not used on the popcorn itself and that's certainly no good. So we're about at the end of the mix I'm guessing. Yep. And here's the high speed cooling. The system is going to automatically dump. And then it's going to rotate the mixing blades to make sure that all the caramel gets evacuated. And sometimes there's, you know, a few pieces left in there, but certainly not much or many. Let's see if I can get a good view. So you can see a little bit of caramel on the bottom, a little bit on that side mixing bar, but you should be able to see there's very little wasted. One user tip I want to show you here is that while I'm on the slow speed mix, I'll slide the collection bin out. Some of the very smallest pieces of caramel will uh, be deposited into this bin. Most of them go into the collection tray which I can show you from behind. This is where most of your small pieces fall through. But between the high speed and shifting to the slow speed, I will get some in the collection bin. So I like to slide it out and dump it. Certainly not required, but it uh, makes for a cleaner finished product with only whole pieces. Now as the cooling finishes up, I'm hoping I can speak and you'll hear because I do want to point out a couple of things. One notice the lid is back on the kettle. Now, if I am making continuous batches of caramel corn, I will immediately dump in a fresh set of ingredients. And this is one of the big things that enhances the productivity of this machine because I would be cooking my next batch of corn while my existing batch is still cooling. So after your first batch of the day, you're always working on two. One's being cooled and one's being cooked. Since I'm only doing one batch here to make this video, what I do instead is I pour about a gallon of water in that kettle and put the lid on. And I just let the machine cool down naturally. But in the process, it traps all of the steam from the freshly added water and essentially just about cleans itself. And I'll show you that because uh, that sounds trivial, but the time saved from not having to clean a kettle uh, every couple of batches is... Um, it's noteworthy. And again, it's all about productivity and consistency. So I could be cooking a second batch. And with my uh, caramel recipes, generally I'm going to be putting out two batches an hour with this machine. And that's two batches with me not having to do much. I have to load the new ingredients in the popcorn. And of course, I have to collect this corn that's an hour back. Yeah, I just stopped talking there. I didn't think there was any way I'd be able to talk over that. But when the cooling's done, this uh, system automatically reverses and then deposits the corn into the collection bin. So I'm showing you the view here uh, because I want you to see the scrap that was collected below. I also want you to, to see that there's very little, if anything, ever accumulated on this uh, conveyor. Because it's uh, steel and smooth and constantly moving, you know, once a month or so, I'll take a steam cleaner and a few bits that may collect, I'll uh, blast it with steam. But uh, it does a remarkable job of cooling the corn with, without dirtying itself in the process. And so again, so you can see just how clean everything is here, even after making a batch of caramel corn. And then when we show you the finished product, like I said, very little caramel is wasted. The few small pieces get broken up and what's left in here is remarkably consistent with even coating. I'm going to grab a scoop and agitate some of this so you can see what I'm talking about.
this allows you to put out a real premium product where everything is consistent little to no bits and pieces you bag this up or put it in cups and people are generally impressed by the fact that it's all whole caramel corn again the scrap falls through the cooling tray and is removed and the cooling process is a lot more gentle than most people expect it doesn't damage the corn in the process now I'm gonna pull off the kettle lid this is what the kettle looks like after adding water and just letting the system sort of clean itself and you know you get a little bit of scrap right there but I did end this process early so I can make the video ordinarily I let the full machine cool down overnight I just walk away from it and you won't even have that little scrap on the bar everything will fall off into the mix by the time it all cools but the question comes up of well how do you how do you get the water out of it so what you do is you turn the machine off and then you turn it back on while holding down the heating button for a couple of seconds and what you'll notice is that these three lights start flashing. These now become controllers for the kettle. As I push this first button, the kettle starts tipping. Now, I stopped it, uh, obviously, because I can't hold the bucket, make the video, and, uh, and explain this all at the same time. But it will continue to its full dumping position. So if you have a pan or a bucket below it, all the water is expelled that way. And then uh, when you're done with that process, this button will return the kettle to its upright position. I'll, I'll cut the video here. I'll do a dump so you can see the kettle. All right, I've dumped the water out and set the kettle back upright. And again, you can see a little bit of corn hanging on, a little caramel onto one of the mixing arms and a, and a few teeny bits of wet corn at the bottom. And, and that's, that's it. All right, so back to summarize what we did to make a batch of caramel corn, how it's different than other machines and then just to tell you how the savory or cheese setting of this machine operates differently. Mostly the same, there are some differences. So I added about 18 gallons of popcorn to uh, the popcorn bucket. Uh, again, it's a 20 gallon kettle, but if you put in 20 gallons of sticky caramel corn, it will tend to uh, lift up or crest. You'll get some spillage, so I use about 18. Turn the machine on, it did its own cooking, it heated up. I leave the lid on until I get somewhere between 100 and 110 degrees Celsius because that lets everything really liquefy and mix, makes kind of a perfect batch every time. Take the lid off, put it in its little storage on the front of the unit, let it continue to cook until, and for my batch, it's 155 degrees Celsius. Sometimes it will, um, it will estimate what the temperature is and start the, the dump closer to 150, 151. Don't worry about that. You can always look at your caramel and see, does it look like all the moisture has been cooked off? You can tell that because when the agitator starts mixing every minute or so, if there's still a lot of water in the mix, you'll see a big cloud of steam. As, uh, as that cloud of steam gets smaller and smaller or kind of goes away altogether, you know there's no moisture left. And at that point, you're just cooking for color and taste. Uh, again, for my batch, 150-55 is the right temperature. I always tell people, just make a couple batches when you get one of your machines, because your recipe is not going to be identical. We do the dump, the machine automatically does the mix. I do spray in lecithin at that time. I also spray a little lecithin on the sidewall so that um, it stays cleaner and all of my caramel gets on the corn. After it does a two minute mix, it goes ahead and dumps it onto the cooling tray. That starts out in a high speed mode, and then after uh, around two minutes, goes into a low speed mode for the remaining four. As soon as the dump occurs, if I'm done for the day, or let's say done for uh, any period of time, I'm not gonna make it an immediate another batch. I'll pour in a half gallon of water, I'll put the lid on, just let the machine cool down the kettle, it won't be heating itself. And, um, and I showed you the video of how good a job it does, even in just four minutes. But you leave it for an hour, in my case, leave it overnight, come into the morning, use the manual controls in order to cause the kettle to dump, pour that liquid out, and, and you're pretty much done. If you are going to make another batch, you can immediately add your ingredients. One thing that I do is I will first dump in about 16 ounces of water so that I want the actual kettle temperature to drop a little bit, get closer to that boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. And after about one minute, then I'll dump my batch of my, uh, my wet and my dry ingredients. The reason I do that is because obviously when I put water into a hot kettle, it's going to boil off pretty quickly. And I don't want my next batch to be drier or not to be consistent and come out the same every time. So I throw in basically sacrificial water, about 16 ounces, 
watch the thermostat as it gets pretty close to 100 degrees Celsius. Then I add my wet and dry ingredients. The kettle's still very warm, so this doesn't really significantly increase the cook time. But it has the advantage that I'm not going to have an immediate boil off of my wet ingredients, nor do I have to worry about burning my dry ingredients. So two different ways to go there, but if you're making the next batch, 16 ounces of water, watch the temperature sensor, gets anything below 110, go ahead and add your next ingredients, hit the, hit the heat button for it to start cooking, put the kettle top back on, because again, I, I want to get it significantly heated so that everything's liquefied, and you just keep repeating that process. So it will be cooking while I'm cooling a batch of popcorn, and generally speaking, you're going to get two to three batches an hour. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to be vague when I say everybody's uh, cooking is different, but everybody's recipe is different. Uh, the thicker your ingredients and the more water or liquids you add, uh, the longer your cook time. Some people do a really light coating with very little liquid. They might get a batch every 20 minutes. Mine, it's more like every 30 minutes. If you're doing a super heavy coat and you use a lot of water, um, you know, maybe yours will be every 35, 40 minutes. Now, 30 is a pretty, pretty average. I think you can plan on that. The uh, things that are different about this than any other process, well, everything's different about this machine, but a couple other things to note is that that cooling mechanism keeps the corn rotating. It's, it's perfectly separated when it's done. So there's no manual involvement. It's also gentle. It doesn't break anything. Every piece is separated. I mean, literally, there's no pieces stuck together. It's perfect. And in the process, all of the small fragments drop through that grate into the collection pan underneath the machine that I'll basically just empty once a day. So that is the most prolific, efficient, consistent piece of equipment in the popcorn market. If that were it, that's the best buy you're ever going to make in terms of consistency, labor, productivity, everything. But this is the twin Auto 20. And that word twin is in the description because, again, it has a cheese mode. Uh, I tend to, again, refer to it as savory mode. So think of it as anything that isn't caramel, any low temperature coating process. You can use this to make 20 gallons at a time of cheese popcorn or garlic or dill, jalapeno, even just regular salt and butter. The difference in the process is, one, you can fill the bucket all the way to the top. That type of corn doesn't stick to itself, so you don't have to worry about spillage. Two, it, it's only going to heat to like around 50, 55 degrees Celsius, um, so as not to burn the ingredients, and because you're, you're not trying to make caramel, you're just basically trying to mix oil and spices. Three, when it gets to the uh, cooling mode, there's no six minutes cooling because it never got that heated in the first place. So when it's done with its mix, the kettle still tips over, it still dumps it under the cooling tray, but rather than running cooling for six minutes, it just turns around and, and dumps it into the collection bucket at the end. You've got a great 20 gallon mixer, and because you don't have to wait for it to heat up as hot, and you don't need six minutes to cool, instead of doing two or three batches per hour, you know, you're gonna be more like six batches, 10 batches, especially if you do as I do, which is while I'm making one batch, I've got preheated oil, add the seasonings, put it on a little burner, so as soon as it does the dump and sets back upright, I'm pouring in a pre-mixed, already warmed sauce, essentially, that has all the seasoning ingredients that I need. I'll let it run for just a minute or two, and then I'll manually push this button I showed you before. You might not be able to see it from this distance. Remember I said you can push the second button to start the mix at any time. So, since I don't need it to really get to 55 degrees Celsius, as soon as it looks like it's thoroughly uh, liquefied and well mixed, I'll just go ahead and manually hit that button to tell the mix to start. And then uh, I still let it mix for two minutes because, again, I want it to be as coated as possible, as even and consistent as possible. So I don't short that part, and I don't have to wait for cooling. But if you already had your ingredients warm, you don't have to wait for the kettle to warm up. And now you can be talking in excess of 10 batches uh, an hour. And um, to have basically a savory cheese machine built into a caramel machine that's as automated as possible, I mean, you're still there to load ingredients, and I still add vanilla and butter, for example, closer to the 140 degree range. Uh, for my salted caramel corn, I'll sprinkle salt above Himalayan sea salt as the corn is mixing. I don't 
put it in the mix because it would just dissolve. But while the cooling mixing process is happening here, you can sprinkle in quite a few things as long as they're light and stick to the caramel. You can't do things like peanuts. That you'd have to do a manual dump with the buttons and put that on an old-fashioned table and sprinkle your peanuts in. Um, but the cooling tray will throw off heavy things. But if it'll melt or it's light, it'll, it'll stick. So I've done like uh, mini chocolate chips, uh, mini dehydrated marshmallows, and, and of course the most common thing for me is to just sprinkle Himalayan sea salt on while it's in the mix. And uh, so those come out fine without any manual intervention. So there are some things you might want to do, for example, like I say nuts uh, or big chocolate chips that might melt too much, where you might want to do those post-processing. But for the time and for the money, there's no other machine on the market like it. And the productivity of how much you can get done, whether that means an employee being more productive and doing our air popping while at the same time doing caramelizing, or as I have known some, um, you know, they'll run three, four, five, six of these machines and uh, when an employee gets good at it, because you can stagger the start time, one employee can manage two or three of these machines, as long as their ingredients are pre-mixed. They may not have time to do all the measurements because uh, the process is pretty quick. But if you pre-measure your, your oil and your dry ingredients so that you can just drop them in as batches, um, yeah, one employee could run three of these machines by themselves. There's really... Um, Probably not much else I can say about it other than that uh, people reach out with specific questions and I'm happy to consult and give advice on how to use machine tips, tricks, adjusting recipes. That's part of the service that we provide and why I run a test kitchen so that I know how to pretty much do everything you can with the machine. Uh, can be just standard caramel corn. I think I showed you some video of my uh, uh, little part of my wall before. You can uh, add your own flavorings and colorings towards the end of the caramel process. So whether you want to make traditional caramels or birthday cake or tutti frutti flavors, this one machine does it all. Feel free to reach out to me uh, if, if I haven't answered questions you might have. That's why I'm here. And uh, thank you again for watching another video from Robo Labs and Caramel Popcorn Equipment. And uh, stick around in the future for the next video and reach out if you have questions.